Welcome to the channel everyone. So today we are building a timber frame wedding arbor. And the arbor is built all out of oak and all out of wood. There's no metal fasteners in there. And so I'm gonna show you guys how we went from some rough sawn beams into this final product. So the first thing we're gonna do is measure up these beams, use our a tape measure and figure out what lengths we can pull or what lengths we need to pull out of each of the beams and what beams are suited for which piece in the product. Um, both on the grain pattern and then also the length. And so I'll take my square and mark that R, which is my reference edge. And that's basically my straightest and most square edge of uh, each of the timbers. And that'll hopefully keep everything, um, if I pull everything off that, all my measurements off that reference edge, it'll keep everything in square for the project. And so you can cut the timbers down in kind of two different methods. So the first one is using a skill saw uh, essentially, you make a cut and then you flip the beam and you have to make a cut on each of the sides because for these beams, six inches by eight inches, my skill saw won't go all the way through them. And so I have to make cuts on each of the edges um, and then flip each time. And then once I finish, I can uh, cut the or sever the piece of wood in the middle uh, that's still existing there with my handsaw. And so the second method you can use to cut these beams is with a chainsaw. And this is preferable to me because I'm plenty comfortable with this tool um, and it's a lot quicker than using the skill saw. And so once I get everything cut to the proper length, I'm going to be making some joinery cuts. So uh, my two upright beams will have two, or each will have one tenon, um, two tenons in total that fit into the top beam. And so that's what I'm working on right now. And so I pull four inches from the end of the beam. You can do three, I think three is the standard in timber framing, but I like to go a little bit uh, more heavy duty. So I do four inch tenons and then uh, I make one cut that's square. And then I make a bunch of subsequent cuts further up the tenon and those will create billets that I can use a chisel here um, to basically knock out and it removes that material very quickly. And so here's what that looks like in a little bit uh, faster speed and more real time. And obviously there is uh, a lot of cleanup. So here's a slightly longer video, um, but showing kind of the, the cleanup process. You know, you do have to get things square. It's really important to double check your measurements, double, double check your square and all this stuff because it's really annoying to have to go back and if something's out of square, then to uh, redo it, especially when you're trying to assemble everything because that's when you'll find out. So I actually take a hand plane at the end and just clean everything up um, and make it really square and, and tight to the lines that I draw. So now I am working on the ends of the uh, top beam, which are going to have an elliptical pattern cut out of them um, on each end. And so I'm making a template for that. So I'm gonna try a couple different lengths and see what looks best. Um, I ended up going with one of the larger lengths, but I usually draw a couple, I'll cut out the smaller ones and see how that looks. And then I'll step it up to larger if I think it's necessary for the uh, proportionality of the design. And so I clean up those edges with a razor knife um, and you just wanna find a square edge in that cardboard and then you can pull all your measurements off whatever square edge and make your ellipse, or your quarter ellipse rather. And so here I am pulling everything, all the measurements for the top piece, so the piece that will sit on top of the two uprights. And as you can see, I drew out that ellipse, especially on the left side, you can see I drew out that ellipse with my template. Um, and then I'm also marking out where the mortises are gonna go uh, for the uprights and the 45 degree pieces. Um, that'll, that'll be the bracing pieces between the uprights and the top piece. And so you wanna be real careful. I pull everything off of the center. So I mark the center of the beam, then pull my measurements off the center so that everything is very symmetrical because 
symmetry is so easy to, to mess up on these things. And so you want to be real careful that you make everything symmetrical. And then I take my chainsaw and cut down to the line of this ellipse and uh, do that a bunch of times. And that'll create billets for me, similar to when I was cutting out those tenons with the skill saw. And then I take my chainsaw and you gotta be real careful if you're doing this, you can get a mortiser, a chain mortiser, um, but I don't do this enough to need one, but I'm cutting out those mortises with my chainsaw, or at least the edges of the mortises. Um, and I'll finish them up with the chisel. And I'm pretty comfortable with doing those plunge cuts. If you're not, then you probably don't want to do that because you can uh, have that chainsaw be or hit your face or be harmful to you. Um, so here I am cutting out those billets with my chisel, uh, knocking them out, and then kind of cleaning up that edge. And it's a lot of work. And it takes a lot of time. Um, it's just kind of grunt work. And there's probably a good kind of portable bandsaw tool you can use to do this, but I don't have one because, I don't, again, I don't do very much timber framing. And so... Um, it just takes some work, but you get it right, it looks good. And so now I am taking an off cut and I am breaking it in half essentially so that I can use it for the two bracing pieces, the two 45 degree uh, bracing pieces that'll come from my upright into my um, top piece. So I'm just taking my ax here and splitting this beam down the center. So then I'll split those once more um, in the other direction and it'll give me two good little beams that I can use for um, the bracing pieces on this project. And so now this piece is thin enough where I can just barely cut it with my table saw. Um, and so I'll cut it into two equal widths and then those will be the final dimensions. I'll have to shave up the edges a little bit, but those will be the final dimensions of the cross bracing pieces um, that keep any lateral movement uh, from going on with my top piece and my two lateral uh, supports. And so here I'm shaping the ends of the support pieces. Um, and it's kind of tough to explain exactly how you do this, but you can look online. There are some templates. If you just look up um, some timber frame joinery uh, examples, then generally this is a pretty simple joint. It'll It'll show up in some of those images, and you can see how these things are done. Um, but basically, you're making two 45-degree cuts on the end that will allow you to slide that piece in for uh, both the upright and the vertical beam. And so now I'm cleaning up uh, with my electric planer the beams, taking uh, that basically top layer of material off because it's kind of baked in the sun and has lots of iron staining and stuff. And so we don't want to want any of that showing up in our final product. So I'll just take my electric planer and shave all that off. And it also gives a, a nicer finish than the rough sawn look. Once everything is cleaned up, we can add our finish to this piece. So the client wanted a little bit of a darker look and a little bit of a more reddish look. And so we're just using a tough timber seal oil um, that is going to seal the wood. And since it'll be outside, um, should keep it in good shape and then also darken that wood up just a little bit. Um, and so there it is after applying a liberal coat to uh, the timbers. And now we're ready to test fit everything. And so I First take my uh, two uprights and I will fit them into the uh, mortise and tenon joints together. And I'll test fit that before I put my uh, bracing beams in. And that's just to make sure that those mortise and tenons fit real nicely. Um, there's nothing obstructing that. And then I will open up the joint a little bit and I will slide my um, bracing in. And then I'll close that joint a little bit. So close that angle a little bit and it should be uh, slid in there all right so so it won't move and won't fall out while I'm uh, pulling everything tight together and so I'll take my ratchet and um, just slowly tighten everything and that should tighten all the joints and um, then as you're doing it you can take a little mallet um, and just beat on stuff a little bit and make sure it's uh, properly seated there's nothing hanging it up and I actually draw lines um, when I test fit to show where everything should be properly seated so that I know when it's, when it's there. And so once everything is properly test fitted and in the right place and fits squarely, then we are ready to put in our pegs and fix everything together. And so each of the um, supports gets one 
uh, peg in each connection. And then for the uprights, you know, the, the major connections, the big mortises, I'll put two pegs in there. And then on the, each of the end of the peg, before I drive them, I will take that exacto and just cut them down a little bit on the end. And it gives a smaller circumference. So if anything is misaligned or has become misaligned after you made that cut, it should pull everything together um, versus getting hung up when you drive that peg and breaking the piece of wood. And then the next step is just to drive everything in. I do leave about two inches of overhang on the end of the pegs. And the reason for I do that is just because it's uh, the tr traditional way they do it. And so I think it looks a little bit better. It has that a uh, little bit of history behind it. And here is the final product. So you see, um, you walk down the aisle here and there at the end is the timber frame wedding arbor. And it's cool as you walk down the aisle, as you get closer and when you sit in the pews, you see the mountains actually drop below the top of the arbor. But um, for the video, that's all we got. And so I really appreciate you guys watching. I hope you found some value in it or some entertainment value. Um, and if you did, feel free to subscribe and catch our next video and like the video. If you like the video, we'll see you on the next one.